Jamaica's changing culture for better or for worse. It is strange and somewhat frightening how our ideas of self, society, gender relations, masculinity, politics, culture and the world in general has changed over time. The freedom we lose as a set with each fleeting culture change is disturbing and unacceptable. It bears thought as to what are some of these freedoms. We are left to ponder whether or not culture is static or is on a continuum defined by globalization. Culture is defined by the Center for Advanced Research on Language Acquisition as shared patterns of behaviors and interactions, cognitive constructs and understanding that are learned by socialization. This bondage of self to which we seek freedom is to a great extent self-imposed, having been socialized in a manner not to critically think about issues which affect us, including those pertaining to cultural matters. We live in a society where norms are part of the socialization process, handed down from role models and parental figures, usually along matriarchal lines. To this extent, one can easily dismiss the father figure role in the process of socialization, since many of our black homes are fatherless. This is quite troubling on many fronts, especially since the ought to be a man role has been taken over by mothers. Strong black women who single-handedly have had to raise generation of boys into men. This is especially true for Jamaica, as the 2012 Jamaica Survey of Living Conditions showed that 46.4% of all households were female-headed. One can surmise that the situation was worsened since the survey was done seven years ago. Dr. Barry Davidson of the Family Life Ministry, research was a bit more probing and revealed that further that father absent children scored lower in IQ than father present children. This finding is rather disconcerting and should be of concern not only to parents but to the policy makers especially those in the field of education. We live in a world and society in which even drinks have been colored by gender. We often speak of female drinks and male drinks. I was at the bar recently and the bartender informed me that Smirnoff was a female drink. She added also that rum or campari was a male drink. I mean, I went to the bar for a drink, not to be schooled in the binary construction of drinks. Additionally, our fruits have also taken on a gendered complexion. The peach, for example, is largely considered a female fruit. Many men do not even eat strawberry, simply because they claim nothing red should pass their mouth. Just stupidity if you ask me. However, this is the reality and these realities represent men from a wider cross-section of the society regardless of the intersectionality of the social class, educational background, religious persuasion, or age. These gendered ideas are rooted in a culture of hypermasculinity and machismo. Ironically, behind closed doors, there are some of the said men who have these twisted ideas are the very ones who are indulging in Fifty Shades of Grey and under the table activities. We are going through a process of rapid social change occasioned by severe acculturation from the ghettos of the North. Jamaica is a society in transition. African cultural norms were devalued and largely undocumented, but they survive today in a number of cultural art forms that will soon be extinct anyway due to mere ignorance. And where education is concerned, its quality at the primary and secondary levels has deteriorated with the democratization of education and the lack of resources for funding teacher training and high-quality educational programs. The result is that persons at the bottom of the social pyramid show lack of achievement and preparation for the workplace. This perpetuates poverty and despair of ever accessing legitimate means of social mobility. Jamaica is a society in transition where external cultural influences are shaping the cultural edge. The middle class who have been traditionally the purveyors of the dominant culture has been eroded through migration and the rise of the new rich. When asked about Jamaican culture, the answers will vary from sun, sea, sun, and smiles to aggression, indiscipline, crime, and murder. Others will think of reggae music and some will think of cannabis. Some will remember our X-rated dancehall music and others will muse about our rhythmic and clean reggae harmony and lyrics. Some will think of Bob Marley and Louise Bennett. And others will remember our African roots, diverse ethnicity, kumina, quadrille, bongo drumming, and traditional art forms. Some people will recall our politics, scammers, poverty, and mendicants, while others will consider our Olympic heroes and natural friend in nature. 
maybe it is full time that we seek to define ourselves culturally. Then again, perhaps we already have. One must therefore ask whether the perception that we portray accurately represents our true culture or not. If the two are one, would that bid well for us as a nation? And if they are not, how do we change that perception to fully represent our culture? We need to consciously remove our negative traits and keep the ones that are positive so that the Jamaican culture will engender positive thought, no matter how it is, how it is defined, examined or interpreted.